Welcome back. Um, recently I got a contribution to my Stockfish open source fork um, where I've been maintaining a version of the engine that can play some variants. Um, and a GitHub user by the name of ENFAB, um, not sure how to pronounce that, but he made a really interesting contribution uh, implementing the anti-chess rule set. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying this out on my Lee Chess instance. So here I am uh, logged into my server. You can see this as well as I can that, um, wait, just let me double check. Yeah, you guys can see that. So I could say, um, well, I'm in this directory. Uh, where do I go to check, um, no, it's not an entire word. Um, somewhere in here, there's a set of AI playable variants. Um, I forget where to find this. AI variants. So this is the Leech S source code. Oh, and I'm going to search in the modules directory and see, um, right, this is where our variants are defined. Um, let's take a look at config.scala. Uh, right, so here we got King of the Hill, Racing Kings, Three Check, Atomic Horde, and From Position. Um, we're going to add one more to this. We're going to say, we're going to assume that it knows how to play anti chess. Um, now I have to remember where was it defined that uh, we sent special parameters to the engine when we're playing variants? That's somewhere in here. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, that's not, that's no longer part of Lee Chess. That's now part of, um, what's it called? Oh, Fishnet. I have a working Fishnet directory here. Uh, so if I look for Racing Kings, I should be able to find that here. Did I miss something? Uh, yeah, here we are. I must have spawned some kind of infinite recursion with that particular grep command. I don't know how, but... Alright, so if we're going to play anti-chess, we're going to need to tell the engine that the variant is anti-chess. Uh, so we're... Where do we find out what variant we're playing? I'm just going to assume I coded it right. This is the fun way to try things out as you code them. See if they... Oh! Never mind, I see there. I need to define required options here as well. Uh, so let me go over here. We're going to add in uh, UCI anti chess. Try that out. I think that's it. Now, I'd be surprised, shocked, astounded, flabbergasted, etc. if this all worked. Um, and let me at least make sure I've got the right stockfish. Git log. Yeah, we added anti-chess variant support on this one. So, oops, let's just rebuild stockfish. 
and then I'm going to launch fishnet, and then I'm going to launch uh, leeches, and just see uh, how far we get with this. So first I want to check that it integrates with leeches, because leeches is a great testing platform. Not that it's simple, not that it's particularly elegant or anything, but it's really visual. Um, and that kind of thing works well for demonstrating things on a stream, just to show like the actual process of developing software. Um, we could demonstrate some of these use cases on an interactive screen, an interactive web page even. Um, so it's not just me interacting with this server, but anybody could theoretically log in and play against it. Um, so that's built successfully. So to invoke fishnet, uh, nope, I broke it. All right, where did I break it? UCI and teach. Oh, wait. Um, all right, so let's see. Ah, we're calling it UCI uh, anti instead of anti chess. Uh, no big deal. Um, right, because these are all types of chess. Um, oh, and I guess I didn't do well at keeping these in any particular order. So we'll just use the same order we've got in the stockfish source code. So yeah, it's not necessarily alphabetical, but that's okay. Uh, let's give this a whirl. All right. Uh, we'll start up leeches. I just proactively typed in run. Um, to start Leechess, you have to invoke the simple build tool, uh, SBT, which invokes, um, you might even see the command here momentarily. No, but I was gonna say that does invoke Java and invokes it with all the correct parameters and so forth uh, to run the leechess application. All this really verbose logging here is fishnet trying to repeatedly connect. And um, yeah, here we are. Here we go, like preloading modules and so forth. These are the things that you see when it actually we've had some success um, invoking the stock, or not stockfish, invoking um, Leechess. You see all these things logged, and then you can tab over here, and we've got Leechess. And I could say I want to play. Well, that didn't quite work. <laughs> uh, I think I have to go into the UI code and say, by the way, um, anti chess is a thing. So let me open up another shell. Uh, and let's see about that. Great thing about um, the SBT, or I guess about Leechess, I'm not sure about how it works per se, but um, great thing is that while in one tab, you see I've got like multiple tabs open here. So I've got one shell where I've got Leechess running we got another shell where I'm able to edit the source code of the running instance. Um, and I'm thinking 
that somewhere here I forgot so, to do something to enable AntiChess in that particular menu, this menu here, where we're listing all the variants to select from. Um, AI variants. So I looked in the modules directory. Um, and I think I properly defined this here. So yeah, I did add anti chess into that list. That's good. Um, uh, but is there anything in the UI part of this where I've got to set some variant options? I thought so. Now let's check out setup helper. Um, let's see. Okay. Translated variant opening choices with variants. I'm just going to copy this. And here we see translated AI variant choices. So I'm going to paste that there. Um, and then we're going to try reloading this page. That's going to trigger some compilation over here. And here we see compiling one scale of source. Um, did I edit a scale file? Yeah, I did. So that is going to require some scale compilation. Yeah, there's some negative feedback because I'm running everything in the same uh, shell. But okay, now do we have. Yeah, we got anti chess now. Stockfish AI level one. Alright, just give Fishnet a minute to wake up. Come on. Let's try that again. Playing. Okay. Oh, it did make a move. Cool. Um, here, let me make... Well, let's see if it finds the forced move. That's a pretty simple test. Let's see if it just keeps capturing things. So far, so good. Okay, so I'm going to take your thing, you take my thing. Um... Okay, take my queen, take my rook, take my knight, take my king. It probably doesn't need to spend as much time thinking when there's only a single legal move, but it doesn't know that. Um, so, ultimately, huh. This is problematic, so takes the pawn, that, that. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I've got an idea about how to do this. Here we go. Take my pawn. Okay, yeah, the invalid position. So I'm not sure, oh, oh, does Fishnet not like the fact that I am missing a king? Maybe. Um, so we're going to take a look at the Fishnet code. Uh, let's see if I can find that message. somewhere in the fishnet modules. What were the modules they're called? Modules under fishnet were... I thought it was called modules. Um, I 
Uh, I don't like the fact that it's taking so long to perform a simple text search, which means I've done something wrong, but here, let's change directory back to fishnet, see what we got here. Hmm. I could have sworn that this fishnet thing had a directory called modules. Um, get rid of my old fishnet just in case there's any destructive interference there. There shouldn't be. Um, truly, this is confusing. Uh, get status. Am I missing anything here? Get diff fishnet.py. Yeah, well, that's a customization I made myself there so that analysis is unbounded on depth. Um. Okay. Here, let's search for this invalid position on message. Okay, there it is. Um, so how is that communicated? How is this communicated? If situation is playable, Oh, so this isn't getting to fishnet. Um, that's curious. So somehow the game's considered not playable. Uh, okay, well, let me see if I can find the definition of playable. Uh, Try that again. Just looking for Scala files. Okay. Situation.scala. Um. Hmm. Oh, playable by AI. Okay. But that's not what we're testing. No, we're testing, is this a playable game? Um, <laughs> Oops, let's try that again. Okay, so we have two definitions of playable. Um, and one of them happens to be in a thing called situation.scala. And what, where we saw that message earlier, um, that message being invalid position on, that was in the context of a position being eval or a situation being evaluated for playability. Um, okay, so here's our definition of playable. Equals board valid strict and not end and not copy dot check. Okay. Um, let's take a look at what did we have here? Uh, it's looking for invalid position. So this is calling situation playable with an argument of true. Um, meaning that it's got to use strict validation. Um, might need to tweak that because we only we don't need strict 
Well, da, da, da. okay, what's the definition of board? Board is of type board. Uh, do we have a thing called board? Okay. We have a thing called valid. Variant.valid. All right. We got a thing called variant. Uh, yeah, in fact, I've seen this. Uh, wait. What package is that in? Um, yeah, I've seen this. I'll call it a class, but it's not a class. Um, as a language you want to use for relaxing projects, is Scala a good option? Um, I'd recommend learning more about Scala if you're seriously considering using it for a relaxing, well, not for a relaxing project, but if you're seriously considering using Scala, I would recommend trying to understand what it is first. Um, I don't, I, relaxing can mean so many different things. Also, hi. <laughs> um, if you're looking to just make some simple, silly, like, I don't know, the simplest possible sort of app, something that, like, adds two and two together, um, Scala could work, but there's plenty of alternatives, too. If you're looking to do something that works well in browsers, um, and... I don't know, has a point and click sort of way of coding it, um, then maybe look for Flash or something. But um, the one thing that is kind of relaxing about using Scala for this immensely difficult thing is that uh, the debugging is just beautiful. Um, the, I don't know, it's a functional programming language. So for your daytime, you use Node.js. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit, I'm actually not the most experienced web developer. Um, like, day in, day out, I actually end up coding a lot in Java, and it's absolutely maddening because um, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong in Java. Um, Scala is in many ways better because it imposes, um, well, uh, what's the word for it? It's not hard typing, but it imposes pretty strict type constraints. So you are able to know a lot about your data at compile time and far fewer things can go wrong at runtime. Um, So, I forgot where I was coming from. I searched here for, yeah, variant.valid. So, for each side, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yep, 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 I see. Gotta be a way to check is this variant anti chess? Um, but yeah, the beautiful thing about Scala is um, it's real, it's a functional programming language. You can, or at least you can often use it in the FP paradigm. So you never end up duplicating or rewriting code and um, you're able to write it once and write some pretty solid unit tests for it. Um, 
So like here, it's saying that each player has to have a king, and now I'm going to try to add some kind of exception to that. And my challenge here is that I don't know how to check what kind of variant this is. Actually, wait. There's extensions of this. Yeah, I shouldn't need to do that here. Let me just grab these 10 lines of code and see if I can write valid moves. Let me see where... Get valid moves, king threatened, king safety, valid side. Uh, so let me see. Unfortunately, this isn't all in alphabetical order. Not that it needs to be. But something like this could be done. And the return of type. Oh, let's see. The return value is going to be these last few lines minus this one feels so weird to do that, but uh, rolls count, pawn is less than, great, nah, less than or equal to 8, and rolls size is less than or equal to 16. Um, yeah, and pawns on the promotion rank. That looks valid to me. So that's good OOP design. Um, could have been factored a bit better in, in the first place. All right. <laughs> Oops, uh, my copy and paste goofed. Uh, where did I goof here? Uh, that's not it. What did I... Huh? Surely I changed that file. You lie, computer. You lie. So... Yeah, that's the same file I was just editing. I surely added these lines of code here. They were not here before. Um, well, that's interesting. This, these two lines weren't there before. Um, yeah, so I definitely added that. Oh. So I have to use the word override for overriding things. Oops. Now, of course, I've changed my context. Uh... Well, let's try this. All right. And meanwhile, SBT is listening to all my changes in the background and recompiles each time I change the code and redeploys or at least attempts to. Um, yep, so notice that I dropped a socket connection, but that's there's nothing that I could have done about that. And now if I refresh, we would expect, at least I would expect the game to reload. Hopefully the engine will make another go at this uh, position. Cool. Um, so, oh, hey, look at that. That was a bit aggressive. So, yeah, I think I got this one. Pretty sure I'm winning this. And 
GG. Well played. Very ending wax victorious. Oh, I see. It gives me a material evaluation of minus 35. Cool. So that was much smoother than expected. Um, again, just to give you an idea uh, where this code came from. Uh, so I've maintained this repo over a repository over on GitHub and got a interesting contribution recently. Uh, our good friend here, Ian Fab. Um, it's the name he goes by. Don't wear it out. Um, but yeah, he implemented these rules. He actually kind of overstated it because we didn't need to implement that. And maybe it is implemented. I just am confused reading the code, but it doesn't matter because castling's not going to happen. Um, and even if the engine had the option to castle, Lee Chess should never tell the engine that there is a position where castling is legal. That's really on Lee Chess to get right. Um, um, promotion to king is allowed. Oh, I should test that out. Um, but yeah, we got this awesome code contribution, done some testing, reviewed the code, uh, had some comments back and forth. Oh, cool. So yeah, um, so next up, now that we got it working, we can have some fun with this stuff, right? Um, so yeah, just FYI, um, check the title, and if you're watching this video on demand, check the link. You can go play um, against the engine there. Um, I'm, oh, I should have left that GitHub link or URL open because um, I don't remember where I was going to go here. But you see, here's all the files. We're referencing that. Oh, I know. It's the move generator. Um... So yeah, we had to change uh, the engine a little bit to be able to play um, anti-chess. Actually, I should check one thing. Um, so if I remove anti-chess here, actually uh, undo that, copy that. Yeah, so if I remove that last argument and recompile this, Will it compile? Uh, does this compile at all? So I'm just checking, is it possible for me to run this um, with anti-chess disabled? Pretty sure it is, but never hurts to be too uh, safe for this sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, we get the options we were expecting, so cool. Uh, let me put that back. Uh, and now I want to go into the move generator and tweak one. Well, there's another thing I have to tweak here. Where did it, where is it? Somewhere here we have a definition of is we have a move validity checker. Uh, oh, where was 
was it? I'm trying to remember. Um... doesn't really provide me much of a clue. Um, but no, I could have sworn that somewhere in this file there's a, a method that, sh or a function. Yeah, here we go. The function here is position legal. Testing where, whether a pseudo legal move is legal. Um, a pseudo legal move is just a piece that can potentially go to a square. So it's just literally, um, well, let me try to explain this, why we have this function in the first place. Um, this function checks whether or not a move can be invalid by virtue of putting the player in check or violating some other check rule. Some rule by which a ordinary move such as, um, I don't know, well, you, there's plenty of situations in a chess game where a piece could be pinned or uh, there could be, um, you could already be in check. Um, I'm really not explaining it well, but yeah, here, one, two, three, four, five, I can add in a special rule for anti-chess, um, uh, that any move that has a semblance of being legal, just the piece can go from a square to a square, that's considered legal in the anti-chess. So any of this validation down here, let me skip past the atomic stuff because that's really confusing. But like on passant here checks whether or not the player is putting themselves in check by virtue of an on passant move, which can remove two pawns that are on the same line. Um, there's some more atomic validation. And here, there's special validations that take place for if you're castling, or if your piece is pinned, um, that sort of thing. But, So any old move is legal um, in this variant. Let's see, how far did we get down here? Oh. Wait. Oh, I see, I see. So I don't need to make this implementation there, but... Um, Well, attacks from piece on square and square. Interesting. So, let me see. What's the point of this? Just make a note for myself here that really we don't need to check um, that we're capturing an opposing piece um, unless somehow the move generator for making captures change such that we're actually attempting to capture our own pieces. Um, 
So. Oh, hang on. Um, yeah. I forgot, there is a special rule in anti-chess. If a player can capture, that player must capture. Uh, ideally, um, the move generator should handle this. Yeah, now that's a valid point, that even though there's no checks in the game, um, we need to still see if there's any captures. Um, and if there is a capture, then we're forced to do that. So it's not can this one piece capture, is does the player have a capture? So... Yeah, that is something that would need to be validated. Um, <laughs> Let me grab some of this and move it down 629 through 611. So we're grabbing 19 lines of code, or is it 18? Yeah, 19. I'm going to put that down here. So we're going to still assert that we're moving our own piece. Um, and that way we don't need to be checking this side to move thing all over the place, because we, um, we know our color. And we can deduce who the opposing color is from our color. So that saves us a couple function calls, which are probably inlined anyhow, but it makes work or makes life easier on the compiler just a touch. Um, so... I mean, I, I can understand not wanting to do some of the stuff related to a king, because that doesn't apply in anti-chess, but we still have to be asserting that we're moving our own piece. Um, so, yeah. Oh. Hang on. We're going to try tweaking this a little bit for performance. So we're going to say if capture m uh, yeah, so here's how we indent the code. Return true else um, hang on so maybe I want to do it this way and I forget how that's forget the standard or the convention that this code follows for indenting or I'm sorry for using negation uh, Okay, but yeah, if this move is not a capture, only in that circumstance do we need to um, to perform any validation. No, I actually like this way better. sprinkle this with return statements. I'm not sure if that's the better way or worse way to do that. Uh, so, 
something like this. Um. <laughs> Is this the convention they follow for iterating through a bit board? Um, I guess so. Yeah, I guess they avoid use of for loops with... They declare things prior to the loop, so a while loop is fine. Um, uh, what do they use for conventions for naming things? Oh, this is probably okay. Um... So, is there a faster way I can check? Um, actually, this is pretty good. Peace is not us. Now, I would hope that the compiler recognizes that that's not going to change. And I would hope that that gets in line somehow. Um, or loop unrolling and all that. So, like, it'll cache or remember or reuse. Um, declaration of peace is not us uh, 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 yeah I would just hope it would remember that things are attacked um, the other funny thing here is like oh wait no there's bitboard pin but that refers to my own pieces being attacked. I was going to say, there might be some clever way to um, indicate where um, I'm attacking something and therefore I must capture. But let's not get overly clever with performance tricks just yet. There's got to be a best way to do that. So, okay, so... Sorry if I'm rambling here. I'm just thinking all over the place. And it is the weekend, so I'm a bit more relaxed here. Um, so yeah, we iterate through every one of our pieces. See if it's attacking anything. It's probably the best way to do it. Okay. Um, so I've got to restart the fishnet. Well, first I have to make sure that it builds. If that does build, um, then it should. Then what? I could always try running it in debug mode. Um, Stockfish itself does have a debug mode that's useful for validating things. Um, just make sure that the debugger or all the assertion statements themselves are still valid for this variant. That wouldn't be a bad thing to check. Yeah, let me in fact try that out. How am I going to do that? I think the make file has... Uh, I forget how the... Oh wait, I have to specify debug equals yes at time of compilation. Um, actually, well, yeah, I should do that just to make sure that it still works. Um, oh, in fact, I can do that and still have this um, latest compile out here. That's all Fishnet cares about is this particular file, the one that 
that's um, optimized for my platform. Um, uh, right. A six sixty four modern um, debug equals yes. Oh, I should re enable um, multi threaded compilation. I'll have to remind myself to do that at a time where I'm able to edit my config files and not show all my passwords on stream. Um, it's fine, 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 fine. Um, see, so yeah, now I can say stockfish, UCI, um, set option, name, UCI anti value true position start position go core dump. All right. So one of these assertions failed. Ah, right. Right, right, right. Uh, if def anti else and um, so here we are in position um, that CPP all right we're gonna recompile and run the experiment again. Um, in fact, if I wanna expedite some of my testing, here's what you do. So you can do cat and then add a hyphen. So that uh, prefixes that text onto standard in. Just pipe that right into the program. Undo move also has an assertion like that. Yeah, so where was that? Uh, that line I just added. What did I just add elsewhere? These five lines and uh, rerun the test and put those five lines at line 1254 and recompile. And this is how I can get away with doing things on the command line. Oops. All right, get diff. Oh, captured type. Okay, my bad. That's what you get for doing blind copy and paste and not being consistent about it. Um, right, because here you're not, here we're restoring a type of a piece and creating a piece out of it as opposed to taking a piece and checking what is its type. Um, I forgot things are a bit compressed in the, um, in the state of, uh, what's needed to regenerate the position. Whereas, like, when we're checking as we make a move, are we capturing the king, um, as we're performing that check, um, there's actually a piece on the board, um, but when, as we do the capture, all that's retained in memory is that the type of the piece that was captured on that square was a king. 
and then later on we have a piece type of king as we are going to put things back on the board and undo our move and we translate that piece type back into a white king or a black king depending on who was doing the capturing so that's the reason for the difference there um, so let's redo our test okay cool um, go infinite let's try that all right we failed another assertion position dot h 339 um so here we are getting the square we're returning the square for a color um oh square for color and for a type of piece and here we're asserting that that square and that color of piece um, must be valid um, because why would you try to get a piece that shouldn't exist right um, so here we got the programs aborting um, we have to figure out where the where on the stack things are going awry. Uh, so we bring out the GNU debugger tool GDB, and we run stockfish in it, and we say run, and then we feed in our input, and wait for the error to happen, and then we get the backtrace. Um, position.h, assert.c, position.h, square, position is okay, at position.cpp1615. So yeah, as we do a move, um, we check is our position sane, and um, something's, uh, something about what we're checking here doesn't check out. Yeah, so it's seeing what's the square of the white king um yeah you're not gonna find that <laughs> i assure you um why do we need that square it actually doesn't have any importance to us um so I'm going to touch this up a little bit. Wait a wait. If we're playing anti-chess... Okay, this is not properly indented. That's what's confusing me. Yeah. Right, so... Normally, with a lot of this code, we say if it's this variant, enforce this rule, else do something, if this, else that. Here, we can't even, um, we can't call this line of code because a player may not have a king. Um, so there are some things we do need to validate, but that whether or not they have a king is not one of them. Um, at least for anti-chess, that doesn't matter. And anti-chess, a player could have no pieces. Although I'm kind of surprised. Um, wouldn't I also have a similar problem here for horde chess? Um, 339. Oh, no. Here if I have, um, yeah, here I'm asserting that I don't have a king and returning square none. Um, 
I gotcha. I see. Wait, then how did I get down here? It shouldn't have been possible to reach that line while we're playing anti-chess. Yeah, what gives? Because um, up here we're seeing... Am I missing that piece? And if so, just return none and don't assert any of these things down here. Um, so why does that not work? Oh, maybe piece count itself is incorrect. That would be sp something special. Um, what have I changed in... Yeah, let me start changing things back to what they used to be here. Um, uh, so... This used to be up here. We used to have an else keyword to follow. And this is still how this used to read. Um, all this was with not indented correctly, but that's okay. That doesn't change anything. Um, so yeah, I can compile. And then figure out why piece count. Well, um, I mean, surely this is going to fail the test again, right? Yeah, piece count is equal to one failed. Although I think that's a different error message than what we saw earlier earlier no no it's the same error message um, probably with the same backtrace um, piece type equals six u um, All right, so what do I do here? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so in anti-chess you could have multiple pieces of the same type. You could have two kings. That's probably what's going on here. Um, which I guess justifies what I was saying in the first place, is that for anti-chess we don't need to be calling this particular code. Now that at least I understand how it could go wrong, you could have two white kings, you could have two black kings. Um, so, yeah, we're just not going to call that line of code at all for anti-chess. Um, and that should fix the problem. So let's see. Okay, we failed again. Um, we run and provide our input. And where are we failing this time? It's search.cpp and evaluate.cpp920. Okay. All 
are we sure that's where it was happening? Evaluate.cpp line 920. That doesn't make sense that we even ended up there. Because 920 has nothing to do with us playing anti chess. Um, That was evaluate.cpp line 920. Maybe I mistyped 920. No, that's that's special. I don't believe that. Uh, let's try recompiling this. Uh, where's yeah, here we are. Debug equals yes. And see if I can get the same error message again. Grab this text put in my clipboard. Let's grab it for real this time. Uh, GDB stockfish run this with my input from the clipboard and uh, see where the things go wrong yeah no that's i'm confused we shouldn't have gotten to that line of code um Evaluate.cpp line 20. There it is. Um, and that's saying we're playing King of the Hill chess. Um, So I guess I can add one thing to this test, um, just a command to print out some debugging info. Uh, I guess that debugging info does not include the which variant we're playing. Um, okay, let's go to the make file. Where is it that we're specifying the optimization level? Oh, it's capital O3, not number O3. Um, so I'm going to say optimize equals no. go here um, I had something in mind oh right I was gonna update my test I don't need that one command in here anymore um, so it's gonna execute slightly slower but um, perhaps more stably? I don't know. Okay, so now it's telling me that we actually are ending up on line 1021 of evaluate.cpp. Okay. So, yeah. We could easily have multiple kings 
Um, this was attacked by White King. Um, that's something we don't need. Oh, actually, yeah. How do we initialize that um, for other piece types? How do we initialize attacked by? Here's all the things we do with attacked by. Uh, <laughs> okay. I suppose I could just search that file. Attacked by two, our square is attacked by two pieces of a given color. Okay, good to know. Um, eval init. Attacked by them all pieces is to include bitboard v. Oh. Um, okie dokie. But yeah, somewhere here it defines squares that are attacked. Um, It says while well, square is equal to p1 plus plus is in, so we're iterating through our squares um, I'm kind of curious here though this actually does populate um, including squares attacked by the king like it, it seems that one thing that could be checked in this loop is is the king the type of piece that's on this square then if so just continue on to the next piece because we've already taken care of that no um, Anyhow, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing where this, which sets up what, where here this method defines the attacked by array or bit board. Um, but having set that up, Yeah. That's funny. Okay. Well, so now I've got to come to terms with what do I do here? We're assuming that each player has only a single king. Which is just wrong. Um, uh, it's causing problems. Or at least it's causing assertions to fail and likely causing evaluations to not be correct. Um, Uh, 
<laughs> uh, I suppose I could do it this way. I don't like that though. Um, To add the keyword else here. And I do want to initialize that attacked by vector, but I'm not sure that that's the right way to do it here. Oh, indentation, I guess, in this method is two spaces? No. Uh, I've got this indented properly by their standards, but um, but yeah, I can't define it this way. Um, I'm not sure if I even need these to be defined, honestly, but you know, actually, yeah, this is way more complicated now that I think about it. Is there some way I can iterate through my... Well, yeah. It's too early to do that iteration, I suppose. Whatever. I'll try doing it this way. that'll have to do. Uh, oh, I'm missing a paren here. really open-ended. I'm not going to put a to-do here, or to-do comment, unless there's some kind of clear direction I can give to it. For all I know, well, I should at least add a comment while explaining how I did this. There we go. Uh, I'll just assume that that's okay. It might not be, but let's assume for now that it's fine. do we get this time? Oh, 
you look at that? So far, oh, we did get near. Just when I was getting optimistic that we might be out of the woods. Um, we're not entirely out of the woods yet. Um, run, print that out. Let's see, where is my next assertion failing? It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. Okay, assertion failed because why? Uh, we're at evaluate line 243 at evaluate 1031. Pinned pieces. Okay. Pinned pieces would kind of assume that there's a thing to be pinned to, no? Let's take a look at pinned pieces. Uh, slider blockers. Oh, yep, yep, yep. As I was saying, this implies that there's something to be pinned to. Um, so we're going to go to 243 here again. And... Um, do 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 uh, what can we do here? If def anti chess else, or just end if. Um, now, there might be clever ways that we could repurpose pinned pieces to just indicate. Uh, are we attacking anything? Um, but I'm not feeling clever at the moment, and cleverness tends to get you in trouble anyhow. Um, oh, hang on, this isn't looking for a single king. This could handle there being multiple kings. Not that there are, but it could handle that. Um, but is this the place I want to put this code? Um, the more I think about it, uh, yeah, let's look for what was it? Pinned pieces here. Um, Let's follow the convention I've, for better or for worse, set down here with indentation. Uh, is zero a valid bit board? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, zero is a valid bit board, thankfully. Um, so let's try this again and see where do we next fail. Oops, that's no good. Uh, there we go. Again. Oh, we got another problem. Where did we fail now? Um, uh, where are we here? Evaluate ten forty four. that fail? Oh, because it's assuming there is a king's square. Um, <laughs> well, maybe 
the solution is something way out of the box here. Uh, Where's that line of code that's failing on? Position.h339. This thing. Um, that's really where the fix has got to go. Hopefully this doesn't cause problems elsewhere. Oh, where was I? That's not it. Um, actually, what have I changed here? Oh, right, I can change this assertion, position is okay back. Uh, although it's doing things we don't need to do. Um, but yeah, for the sake of the structure of this code following a pattern, uh, let's do that. good enough. Uh, there may be Compiles um, and does it run? Oh, we've made it this far without a problem. Nice. So if this makes it to say depth thirty, uh, maybe something less than that, I can feel comfortable about uh, recompiling this with optimization turned on and retest this um, to see if the optimized code also has problems. Oh, no, we got a problem. We got a problem. It's search CPP 1223. Um, yeah. Got a core dump. So, let's see. So we want to rerun this. Uh, and see if we can get that same core dump to happen. Assuredly we can. And when it does happen, this time I'll, now that we've got the debugger tool um, running the program through its paces, I can get the backtrace uh, as to how we got this invalid evaluation of a position. what the value was that caused the failure, but um, what line 1223. Okay, 
That doesn't tell us much. We can see that alpha was minus 240, beta is minus 239. Depth is a one ply search uh, looking for a cut node. But yeah, ultimately I'm going to need to augment the source code um, to see more about how we got this invalid value here. Um, oh, I can't print out the position after every problem. Um, if one and if. This is my signal to myself that I need to come back here and remove that. Um, So we're going to say if um, if this condition does not hold true, then print the position, whatever it takes to print it. Uh, and I forget the way to print that out. Um, oh, hang on. Check that out. We got a method debug print. We got a function debug print. Let's call that function, and um, hopefully that'll provide some more context. It's probably not going to provide all the context we need. Um, and the function to do the debugging or printing itself could fail, which should be kind of sad. But um, hopefully, it'll give us some clue as to uh, what the position sort of looks like around the time of the problem. <laughs> Line 1226 failed. Um, wait. Okay, I'm guessing debug print didn't... Why did that not do what I hoped for? Perhaps I hoped for too much. Um, oh, yeah, no, that's not what I was looking for at all. Um, How do I print out a position? Um, <sighs> oh, yeah, operator. This operator is used to print all the options, but I think that there is an operator. Yeah. I typoed. Yes, I can actually print out a position like this. Um, now, where was I trying to add that printing that was around here? Um, that was in search.cpp. Here we 
go. Yeah, I know I'm going over the 80 character limit, but that's okay. This code isn't going to stay there forever anyhow. Uh, I've got to recompile. Uh, why would I want to do that? Uh, oops. Why would I want to do any of that? at all the things we're printing out. Um, oh, that's kind of interesting too, but um, let's try that. Compile. Give me some info this time. Please tell me what the position was. Where are the problems happening? So this is a position where a problem occurs. Um, yeah, that doesn't tell me too much now, does it? does tell me that value is not in the bounds between negative infinity and positive infinity, um, but does not tell me why. And I see that both players have at least one king, so... Alright. Uh, I suppose I'll need to add some more info. Um, Here, move goes by the name M. Um, I don't suppose that I have a thing called CNT inside this function, so I don't need to have that here. Um, it'll probably be okay. Let's recompile and rerun the program and see do we have useful info as to what the move was in that position that caused things to go haywire. So I guess what I'm trying to do at this point is make the program resilient to conditions where um, players uh, have multiple kings or have no kings. Um, oh, I forgot I could type this. But no, I get a core dump first. Um, but yeah, I wonder what's up with that position. it. Let's put that on its own line. 
and string all this together. Actually, I don't know if that's going to work. That's kind of funny. Because I assume sync C out probably adds some qualifier at the beginning. So I'll need to do something more like, like that. And let's just delete it this way. Um, I'm curious what the value of the variable value is. So let's see if we can get that printed out. That's not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. Um, right, so I've got that in my clipboard, so I can just paste that in here. It's probably okay. And let's recompile. And please tell me what the problem is this time. So hopefully this will provide me the information about how it's coming up with some crazy evaluation of the position. It's probably really confused by the fact that I'm ignoring the king locations. Or I'm so yeah, each time we're asking for the position of a king, we're just saying, you know, the king's not on the board. Because kings are not royalty in this anti chess game. Ah, past pawns. Um Yeah, that's kind of well, black does have a passed pawn here, especially after queen takes queen. Uh, we're in an endgame sort of position, so it becomes important that um, player has potential for passed pawn there. Um, uh, so I gotta figure out what to do about that. Where's that defined? Pawns.cpp. Uh. Oh, are we measuring the distance from the pawn to the king and deciding how much? Um, of a bonus to assign for that pawn because yeah if a player doesn't have a king that could be a problem for that kind of measurement um, <sighs> dot 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 I don't understand what I need to do here. Other than maybe saying if we're just playing anti-chess, um, there is no pass pawn bonus.
Uh, okay, where's yeah, here's score. Score is equal to zero. What do we eventually return here? We return score. Yeah, having passed pawns in, well, <laughs> it's a yeah. No, it is a virtue to have a passed pawn. It's just not anywhere near as strong as it is in a normal game. Well, I don't know. It's complicated. We'll put it that way. But I would have assumed there'd be a pawn bonus um, for well something here. That's fancy. Didn't know there was this function called squares. Um, I better check the way that was implemented. Okay. Uh, what are all the places I need to consider? That, that's not cool. Um, these are all the things that could potentially be affected by expecting there to be one king and there's actually more than one. There could also be less than one king. Um, right, so there's a thing here called king distance. Interesting. The file distance of the white king to the black king minus the rank distance of the white king to the black king. Well, yeah, the kings are definitely on different files. They are in different ranks. Um, interesting. So yeah, this concept of king distance doesn't really apply in anti-chess. Um, least of which because you could have zero or multiple kings. So I can't really... What can I do here? Um... to declare this and then separately define it. Uh, wait, how's this align? So those two words distance are aligned like this. And we're going to say um, if position is an anti-chess game, do something else, um, do something else. Uh, does it make sense to do this? 
first of all, I'm confused why king distance is equal to the file distance minus the rank distance. That seems confusing to me. Um, but I suppose that's going to be okay. Because there's, I mean, what else can you do here? I mean, if you've got three kings and your opponent has four kings and you both have passed pawns, it's kind of difficult to measure king distance at that point. Um, so I suppose this is what the best we can do here. Um... Either that, or, um, actually, yeah, there's something I could do to make this a little more complicated. Um, no, 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 we're not even going to try that. Um... That, that's future work for sure. That's super complicated. Not even going to touch it at this point. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to fix the problem, but it is a problem that would eventually need to be fixed. Pretty sure that's not going to fix the immediate error message that we were observing, though. Um, because in that position, both players had a king. So we got, what, to depth 22 or something before the error? Yeah, here we are. Here it is again. Um, that crazy value where black, I don't understand why uh, he's got a middle game past pawn score. Of, well, it's just so far out of bounds that it's overflowing or underflowing. That's the only explanation that comes to mind. Um, but yeah, that's an enormous value um, for past pawns. Probably because something about um, something is needing to know where the king is located for some reason. Um, Evaluate past pawns. So 
we're in a race, if we're doing King of the Hill. Um, got Horde Chess. Um, This, this is normal execution. Um, yeah, adjust bonus based on king's proximity. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. Oh. Uh, Start to grab these two statements here. And define another exemption to the rule. Um, whoops, let's grab this. Change this from atomic to anti chess. Uh, do some stuff here, though I'm not sure what. Um, and then end this with an else keyword. So yeah, distance from uh, off the board to the blocking square is simply unreal. Um, uh, here we need to check, is this anti-chess? Maybe in this case we're just not doing anything. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what that other coder did. Oh, okay, I see they coded it like this. So I can follow that example. Um, So they coded something that looked, nope, not that. Put this in this clipboard. Yeah. Uh, I might want to add a comment explaining what I'm doing. Wait a minute. Okay. Where are the white pieces we use? Oh, I see. Um, so I might actually want to do something here. Um, just given the, what we did in Horde Chess to assume a king distance, we're going to want to do something similar down here. Except let's copy the one line I'm interested in. It should be this line. Wait. That's not right. Is it? It's possible either player might not have a king. Um. So if we're the white pieces, our promotion is based on where their king's located. Um, if we're the black pieces, how does this formula normally work? Oh, it considers the locations of both kings. In this case, we don't have the location of either king. Um, yeah, we can't do any of that fancy stuff. Um, assume, uh, well, 
There's really nothing we can do. Although it really is a factor. Oh gosh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. Um, well, yeah, you know, no, king distance is definitely, it's a huge factor in anti-chess endgames. Um, it makes a big difference. So... It's going to be fun. So I'm going to need to copy this whole block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something lines. Put it here. And then consider. Um, What's the distance that we're talking about? Um, except we're going to need to do this for all the kings. Well, 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 well. Um, uh, where's that defined here? Instead, CPP. Uh, so we're going to copy that over here. PL must be pawn list. Um, So we need to know um, let's see I'll just bonus based on King's proximity except there could be multiple Kings well Actually, no, let's make those accumulate. Just for whatever reason, maybe it'll actually matter. Um, Keyword out here in case. 
Matter of fact, let's put that in the comment just in case I need to compile this for some reason. Um, King's proximity and here's where we actually want this like so here calling this all over the place or rather than calling pos.square we need to call that uh, I suppose that's the best we can do it's a bit more sophisticated um, the bonus each time um, their king is close to the pawn and decrement the bonus each time our own king is close to the pawn um, and that seems correct now is there already some square s to yeah, I can't use s. I have to use some other variable name. Um, right, s is reused here later. Or it may be reused, yeah, it is reused down there. So I can't use it here. I have to say some other variable name. say K instead of S. Uh, or follow the convention that we've had elsewhere where it's KSQ. Uh, so that's special. Um, Thankfully, that's not declared in the same function there, so I can do that, and that looks okay. Cool. Uh, hopefully, that'll make more sense. Oops, I have to recompile program. Here's our compilation command. 7.11. Again. Okay, let's run the test. This sort of thing is why I've been so hesitant, by the way, just to even start on the anti-chess development. There's a huge chance of it not being right the first time because chess and anti-chess are very different. Um, for those who don't know, anti-chess uh, 
it's a game where you're aiming to sacrifice all of your pieces and similar to checkers if there is a capture you must make a capture some people didn't even know that about checkers but um, it's the case in both games um, and so that can lead to some really interesting situations in anti-chess where a player has multiple kings and they're trying to stop pawns from promoting or they're trying to force a pawn to promote onto a certain square or to promote to a certain piece um, timeliness of pawn promotions is a huge factor in anti-chess as well as what piece you choose to promote to so there's just so much to think about and so much to test in this variant um, but yeah I said if we're gonna hit depth 30 successfully then um, then I'll recompile with optimization enabled and um, see if we get any errors that way. And it shouldn't matter whether or not it is enabled. Theoretically, the optimization should not cause debugging information to be incorrect. Um, and I guess, depending how impatient I am, maybe I'll declare success before we hit depth 30. And maybe I'll choose to just go ahead and turn on optimization and retest with it on because there's a greater probability of things failing uh, with optimal uh, bytecode or I guess optimal binary code um, than there is for a failure with um, uh, with it off in part because um, well it takes more time to execute for one thing and secondly, uh, when you're not performing optimizations, um, uh, things tend to get initialized properly and there's less risk of initialization or uh, the state of things to not be sane. Compilers do take some pretty aggressive optimizations. Um, and so they'll sometimes share data uh, that you wouldn't ordinarily expect to be shared. They'll reorder statements if it makes um, a block of code run faster and produce the same output, at least in theory. So the more the code or the more the program changes from what the developer had initially intended to something more optimal, more efficient, possibly more risky because compilers do aggressive things and generally know what they're doing but and generally look at the code and assume the developer read all the warnings and chose to uh, go ahead anyway but um, compilers can do some really aggressive and intelligent things um, it's a mixed blessing well we've hit depth 29 I'm not seeing any problems yet. It looks like an eternity until we, well, I was going to say until we hit depth 30. But then I saw we're on current move 20. I'm confused. Oh, okay. So my point here I was going to try to explain was that we're in exponential time. Um, each time we look one move deeper, uh, looking one move deeper beyond that uh, takes exponentially more time to do. Um, so you see here it's looking at d2, d3, move number 10. b2, b3, move number 20. So it's considering at this depth with this starting move, um, uh, what's my evaluation? But yeah, my point here is that I've heard that in chess there's often a branching factor of six. So it'll take six-ish times more time each time you look a half move deeper to perform proper evaluation, analysis, searching, and so forth of a tree that's each time a half move deeper. So if it takes you one unit of effort to look one move deep, it'll take you six units of effort to look two moves deep. 
36 to go three moves, uh, 216 to go four moves, and then far much more beyond that. Uh, but yeah, we hit depth 30 successfully. Didn't see anything really blow up. Um, so I'm going to make clean, revert to the default setting, which turns on all the optimization flags. In this case, it's just dash 03 is the macro that expands to do all the awesome stuff um, to make this optimal for this computer. Um, and we're going to rerun the test. This might take a while, too. And if running it from the command line remains successful, then I'll turn off debugging mode, run another test with the same parameters, just make sure that having debugging mode off doesn't present a problem. Um, and then we'll take one last look over the code, check it in, publish it, um, and start running it on my instance. Um, not necessarily going to do all those things in that particular order, but though that's what we're intending to do next. Um, I don't remember all the changes that I made during this session, so before I turn off uh, debugging, I'm going to review the code changes. Then I'll turn off the debugging um, and um, rerun this test. Oh, that reminds me, yeah, I did put in some temporary code with that um, macro if one to enable and disable that code. Um, while I'm debugging, sometimes I'll put that sort of thing in there, and if that particular piece of code gets executed too much while I'm adding pieces of code elsewhere, I can change that if one to an if zero. So that's why I follow that um, pattern. But yeah, having that extra code there does favors for nobody. It's performing additional comparisons that do not need to be performed. Um, so I'm talking about, what is it? Uh, where did I put that? The other thing about if one is it's really easy to locate that later because no sane developer puts this in release version of code. So there goes that difference. Um, so here's what we added today. Um, that was that past pawn bonus code that we were just going through, which we changed to consider cases where there may be zero, one, two, or who knows how many kings. Uh, each one of them will weigh into the past pawn promotion bonus. Uh, past pawn promotion is still a useful thing because promoting to the correct piece is often very useful. Um, I changed the king distance function here. Um, I have no idea what to do there, so I'm just going to assume that a king distance of zero is fine, which it probably isn't, but I'm not sure what else to put there. Um, Well, I do have one idea. Um, you remember how um, the, where was that change? It was an evaluate.cpp, right? So I was saying in horde chess, assume a king distance of approximately five. Um, just completely out of the blue, picked a number. It seemed like a reasonable number. So, you know what? We're going to take that same number and apply it over here in, uh, where is it? Position.cpp, right? King distance. Um... Sorry, now where was that? Oh, is that also an evaluate.cpp? 
Yeah. Um, good enough. Because at the start position, the kings start seven spaces apart. Um, and I don't know. Five, I mean, five is like halfway between um, kings can be, well, in anti chess, you can actually put them closer together than um, you can't put them like, I was going to say, in normal chess, kings can be distant by either two squares, three squares, four squares, five squares, six squares, or seven squares. Um, so five is like halfway between two and eight, and in end games on average, five sounds like a reasonable distance. In the anti-chess, I guess it's more complicated, but it's also kind of difficult to get the king over to the pawn, so we're just going to blindly assume five. We're probably off by one or two or three, but that's okay. What do you do? Um, not sure what you're asking. Um, oh, here's the rules validation change I put in place to fix that. Uh, fix that we can allow a, a king to be captured. Um, right, so that's fine, that's okay, because we can't pin any pieces, although now do I really need this? Slider blockers, let me look at the definition of slider blockers, uh, oh wait, this is position.h. Here's how I'm going to add this in. I'm going to say for playing anti chess, I can do it that way. And this way, I don't need to change the core function itself here. Uh, so that way, you could potentially have a pinned piece, but we're not going to deal with that at the moment. Um, I envision that in the future that'll be something that uh, that we do something more complicated with. So wait, where did I put that again? Put that in yeah position dot cpp. Now we'll check. Um, it accepts a square and it looks for a target and sliders like pieces that can interpose or can potentially expose a discovery. Um, but square S does not necessarily have to be a king. Um, so I made this more generic, is my point. Um, so let me try recompiling this and rerunning the test. Um, so I guess I'll try to answer your ambiguous uh, question. I'm assuming it's a question, even though it's missing a question mark, but um, I assume you're asking, like, what am I doing right now? And what I'm aiming to do is take a chess engine and allow it to play anti-chess. Um, and so the rules of anti-chess are pieces move the way they do in a normal chess game, except... Um, your objective is to sacrifice every one of your pieces. Um, to that end, that also includes the king. And so this game has no check, it has no checkmate. The person who gives up all their pieces first wins. Or if you get stalemated, you also win. Um, um, and pawns can promote to any piece other than a pawn. 
so you can promote a pawn to a king. So the rules are quite a bit different. I took somebody else, I accepted somebody else's code contribution this morning. They actually contributed it um, while I was out on the road, out of state. Um, and so now I had a chance to review it this morning, accept it, and now I'm testing it and finding all kinds of bugs because, well, I've been in this code long enough to know where to find the bugs and how to find them. Um, and the person doing the contribution didn't necessarily have that level of familiarity with the code. Um, although they seem to be better at running automated tests than I am. But the automated tests aren't discovering this sort of thing. So. Um, but yeah, it looks like everything's compiling and running smoothly. We hit depth 30 again, no problems. Um, I would say compile, but... Uh, can I do J4 to compile four files at a time? That's useful. So now we're running without any debugging. Rerun the test, see just how deep this can calculate. Um, it's no longer burdened by doing all these really aggressive um, assertions. Um, well, aggressive is not the right word, but really thorough assertions to make sure that data have to be correct. You now we've like taken all the safety rails off and are just letting this run. Um, so, yeah, it appears that we got something that runs. I can't exactly comment as to how accurate it is. Uh, it comes up with evaluations for how good or bad the position is. And that's that. Um, so, we've edited three files in total, plus the test file, which I'm not going to commit. Um, So this file here had uh, almost, in fact, in everything to do with fixing validations. Uh, so commit one of two is going to be fixing rule validations for anti-chess. something there that didn't need to be there. I added a continue keyword, uh, which was redundant. And yeah, this doesn't need to be here anymore. Um, I previously added that to prevent, well, uh, it doesn't matter now. I do the commit, now I've got to recompile and retest. No big deal. Yeah, so here's my test. Sets up the board and starts the engine calculating. Um, do these variations make any sense, by the way? So it's looking at a lot of things. 
Right now it's looking at f4 as the first move. Now it's looking at c3 as a first move. Um, so yeah, I haven't really been looking at this for how good or bad those moves are. But just these are things that it needs to evaluate. C4, C5, F3, F6, E3, E6, 92, 97. Well, it seems really hesitant to give away pieces. I will say that. Or at least it's looking at really complicated things for dubious reasons. Um, all right. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. So we're going to get commit fix and optimize rule and state validations. Uh, that so anybody can have access to that change and remaining we've got um, me fixing the end game bonuses so we're going to commit this change fire it up, right? In fact, this has been running the whole time, but I need to deploy the new engine. Um, so we're going to stop Leech us. I'm assuming nobody's playing on here right now, right? That seems like a valid assumption. Somehow it did crunch and evaluate 2 million nodes, but nobody's playing on my server right now. So yeah, I'm going to take it down. There we go. Um, and we're going to kill Fishnet. Alright. Fishnet in the background. Whoops, that's not right. And then run leech us. And you can see here we're still waiting to reconnect the server. Um, I suppose in the meantime I could check out what's going on on GitHub. Um, oh, we're, we are a commit behind the official master branch. What did they change this time? <laughs> ah, shite. So the minute I merge, oh, you guys, this is a development branch, I get it. They simplified, simplified the space formula, but now they need to apply a cap to it. Um, the previous change had been out there for a week. This happened just this morning. Um, but yeah, it's important, so I have to merge it in.
Wait, what was the difference here? Oh, they also fixed the extra white space character. That was bugging me too. Um, so they want to cap that bonus at 16. I'm not sure if that's something I always want to do. Whatever. I'll try it. It's not going to merge very nicely, but um, I mainly meant to check on has this guy commented anymore? This Ian uh, developer. No. So that's cool. Alright, so Lee Chess is up and running. However, I see that there is an upstream stockfish change, and it would be remiss of me to miss that. So. Uh, I don't need that test anymore. So we're exactly on pace with that. Um, get pull from the upstream master branch. Of course, um, this tells us we have a conflict in evaluate.cpp. Specifically this conflict. Um, okay. Oh, so here's the definition of int bonus. And here I redefine the bonus if we're playing horde chess. Um, so I have to decide, do I want this else keyword? Uh, this is probably okay. Yeah. So, we'll just assume that for Horde chess we want something that could be greater than 16. But in normal chess, um, we want to cap that bonus for space at 16. Uh, so... Uh, where's my compile command? It's somewhere in my command history. Um, does it compile? I wager it does compile. And... It's an upstream commit, and under normal chess circumstances, that piece of code has already been tested. So I know it's going to integrate well, or at least I'm really highly confident it will. Um, Alright, so I'm going to have to restart my Lee Chess so I can get access to Fishnet and tell it to... To restart. Start up Leech Us. I think I'm done with this terminal here, so close that terminal. And now we'll just wait for this to start. Um, or if you want more feedback, we go over here. There we go, we started to fire it up. Um, internally, we're on port 9663. Externally, um, you can access this through port 80, which is just your normal web server port. So, okay, starting up, starting up. And notice that I dropped a connection from the last session. Oh, that's cute. Dash, comma, dash, 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 players. No, it's actually just two players logged in. And they're both me. Because uh, it forgets that the other socket that was open, yeah, was the same person as I am. That's kind of funny. Um, so, what tournaments we got coming up today? 
We don't have any anti-chess tournaments coming up. Do we ever have one of those? Do I change my tournament schedule to put more anti-chess things in here? I think I do. Yeah, I think I'm going to take all the crazy house tournaments and substitute in anti-chess tournaments instead. Um, so, one sec while I get that started up. Um, there, get this here, um, gonna drop this over there, uh, hit F11 to go full screen, um, let's see, so where's the scheduler? Um, crazy house is scheduled somewhere in here? Not for long. Um, yeah, so schedule or tournament scheduler. Ooh, I guess the, the scheduler looks at the schedule and implements it, I guess. Um, Okay, what's the deal with winner stat scale out here? Oh. Well. Yeah, we're going to add in anti chests to the daily winners. Um. See that anti chess is not a scheduled tournament. Well, it does happen once a day. Um, right there. Okay. So where have I put anti-chess now? I substituted it in wherever we used to have Crazy House. I switched um, Crazy House in the one spot there used to be anti-chess. Uh, so it's probably okay. Yeah, so future scheduled tournaments, assuming everything compiles fine, I assume it will. Let's refresh the page or load up some page. Just give things a chance to compile. Um, cool. Does compile. And whenever a tournament's scheduled in the future, it's going to be an anti chess tournament. Um, so you see, like, there's this whole line down here for Crazy House. Well, in the future, things that get scheduled there are going to be anti-chess events. So look forward to that, I guess, this afternoon. Uh, until then, if you want to play against the engine, you don't have to play in one of these tournaments. You can just challenge it directly. Uh, so let's take it on and watch it kick my butt. I assume it's going to do well. Okay, not a good start. Oh, there we go. Um, my mouse is a bit sensitive, I suppose. Um,
Well, at least it knows the rules. It's playing legal moves, but perhaps not the best. Um, actually, yeah, it should have tried to sack the bishop there. I wasn't paying good enough attention to what was going on. Um, So, yeah, evidently the engine has some room for improvement. Um, still, have fun walloping on it. <laughs> um, and, yeah, if you play against it, your games may be listed up here. Um, I should get it to start playing some automated games. But, yeah, I'm the only player logged in at the moment. I could solve today's daily puzzle. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it's going to take to get um, it to play stronger. But at least now the rules are correct. Um, it doesn't seg fault or segmentation fault or error out anymore. Um, so I should probably follow up. Let me do that right here. I'm not logged into GitHub on this computer. So let me do this, address this on my other screen uh, where I am logged in. Let's see. All right. So I can show you what I added um, to the pull request. Uh, so we had a recent pull request. Here it is. Um, I had a comment saying it's good that yeah, he checked that enums, at least in Stockfish, have to be 4 bytes or 32 bits wide. Um, so all these changes we made to allow you to promote to a king are good. I committed a couple bug fixes, although I'm managing to defeat it. And wishing him best of luck with regard to what he stated earlier, which is that he's going to start using negative piece values and such to uh, see if he can get the evaluations uh, to evaluate properly. Um, but yeah, we got the rules in place. Um, engine is now up and running for those wishing to play against and trounce it. 
uh, or those just wishing to learn the game. Um, it's not as brutal as it could be, and one day it'll get there. Um, but yeah, as for now, we got this coded. can declare success on it. Um, I'm going to check quickly, uh, see if I got any messages from other developers or such about this. Um, Yeah. No such messages. See, I'm trying to remember. The developers are asking me which of these variants that we can play against the engine isn't actually really strong yet. Um, not sure which one to recommend next. stronger atomic engines out there which is what has me concerned about recommending atomic so just for the record um, like if you go to just leech us um, and you want to play a game with the machine you can select from standard chess chess 960 king of the hill and three check or you could set up a board position and play standard um, so here my instance has gone considerably beyond that um uh, i don't know though so we've added four variants anti-chess which obviously is very much in pre-alpha it's not ready um just in terms of getting evaluations and finding good moves uh there's atomic horde and racing kings. Um, to check which variants have had the most requests to improve the engine lately.
Oh. Well, yeah, I guess... So, regarding Horde chess and Racing King's chess, Horde where you have tons of pawns and you're just throwing them at your opponent and trying to checkmate them, and your opponent's taking the perspective of somebody like, um, I don't know if you've ever played Space Invaders, but there's this huge horde of aliens coming down on the planet and you have to shoot them all down. Um, it's a similar concept in Horde chess where there's all these pawns coming at you and you have to capture them all. Um, so I've got, I've written the world's only Horde chess engine and um, similarly for Racing Kings this is a new variant where you're trying to get your king to the other side. Irrespective of how good the engine is at these two variants, it's the world's best engine by virtue of being the world's only engine that can play those. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, Lee Chess is taking some interest in, in these, these new variant development. Um, uh, the good news is, um, oh, I should mention this to Lee Chess devs that um, I've got all these variants deployed on my instance. So, yeah. If anybody wants to log in and play, obviously the link is in the stream title. Sorry for being so quiet. Been communicating um, with the other devs, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, and good to, it's good to hear that they're interested in the engines and I'm a bit more optimistic in them now, um, given the recent contributions that Ian's been making. So I have to give him thanks for that. Um, and yeah, maybe this afternoon or maybe after that sometime, oh, Hey, look, we got anti-chess tournaments on schedule. Um, <laughs> I don't know why the AI didn't automatically join up. Like, you'll see it does automatically join the hourly classical arena. Does automatically join... Well, it doesn't do that, because that's Crazy House. But, um, but yeah, it will automatically join up onto... It should for these hourly anti-chess things. Um, see how it joined the bullet, super blitz, blitz, classical. You'll see the marker for classical way over here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Um, 
But yeah, I should figure out why it didn't automatically join up for the Crazy House tournament. And see if I can get it to automatically join those t as well. Or, I'm sorry, the Anti-Chess. And once it is automatically joining up, then I can have uh, change the scheduling to join more than one at a time. Devs want the URL for my server. Boop, 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 boop. So yeah, I can provide them that. that's kind of funny Ugh, not that well yeah they'll eventually need to coordinate releasing it onto their servers uh, uh, but yeah I could give them the API key because um, the AI does have an API um, they have a distributed uh, network for the chess analysis and chess playing. Uh, they call this fish net, which is kind of a pun, kind of a clever name, because you know there's many fish swimming in the ocean. You could potentially have a net with all the fish. Plus, it's on the internet, and you you get the idea. Uh, yeah, fish net is their way of um, deploying these AIs. Um, to their production server and distributing it so that there doesn't need to be one central server playing all the games at once and there doesn't need to be one central server analyzing all the games at once um, oh <laughs> so one thing I will need to make a pull request of it sometime is, um, and somebody might beat me to it, that in anti-chess you don't necessarily need each player to have one king. They could have multiple or zero kings. Um, apparently the way Lee Chess is coded at the moment, it doesn't care about that. Um, I'm not sure... If, if, that's kind of interesting, actually. How come that doesn't matter for Atomic? I mean, I guess the game's over once a player loses their king in Atomic Chess, but um, there's a method called... Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's even termed a method, but there's a function um, in the variant... Um, is that a class? Is that an object? I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming it's a class. But yeah, there's a function called valid, and it will return false if um, it's the case that neither player has exactly one king, or either player has not exactly one king. Um, so I should probably notify Lee Chess that I found that by way of trying to make the engine play anti-chess where there can be considerable durations where a player doesn't have a king. Um, but yeah, I should try to look into why um, this tournament is vacant. Um, I've got the time to do it. I'm not sure I'm going to arrive at any fantastic conclusion, but let's see if I can at least make some progress on this. I was kind of intending to wrap it in, up and call it there. Oops. Let's, uh, let's see if I can attach this terminal up here. Um, yeah, okay, you guys see this window now. I forgot about that. Let's tab over. Um, 
and here's recent changes I've been making. Um, wait, okay, here's the tournament API. This is the thing I make at uh, uh, tournaments uh, upon their start will ask AI players to join them. Um, but why did this not happen for, um, uh, I don't know. Game analyze, oh, ho, ho, ho. this might be the thing. I declared a thing called AI variance. I didn't look at this. There's another thing called analyzable variance. Um, so let's take a look at uh, game.scala. Okay, how do you spell analyzable? Apparently not with a Z, or as some people would say, not with a Z. Um, now where does anti-chess normally fall in this listing? Well, I guess at least in this file it falls at the end, so... Oops, undo. So let's add this in. Um, but I guess what I'm most interested in is not analyzable variants, but AI variants. This is where this is what I should be checking in tournament API. Uh, it should be setup source main config that scale. Let me know about that one. Uh, wait, where am I going to find that again? Um, Leela game config, right? No, setup config. Oh, do I really want to look in the setup directory or package? It's probably okay. Yeah, setup makes it's reasonable. Um, So why is there a difference between um, there's analyzable um, and then separately when you're setting up a game there's a thing called AI variance. Does analyzable mean, well, I'm not sure. I guess analyzable means that it has an analysis button, right? Yeah, 
I'm not sure why there's a difference. Maybe it's just... I mean, people can analyze a crazy house game, but the AI can't analyze it. Standard 960, King of the Hill, 3 check, Atomic Horde, Racing Kings, Anti-Chess, and From Position. Um, um, but over here, there's standard chess. I mean, this is the same thing. Yeah, I'm not sure why base config defines this thing AI variance, which ends up being this. Well, okay, these are the IDs of variance as opposed to the types, I guess. I don't know. Something about this is less concise than it could be. Um, there must be some way to spell out AI variants without um, doing it this way. But, uh, in fact, yeah, this, I'll just leave it be. I guess maybe the ordering is important or something silly like that. Um, But yeah, that can stay as it is. Um, uh, the real test will be next time that a crazy house, or I'm sorry, an anti-chess tournament comes up. Um, and by comes up, I mean starts. Um, that an AI will automatically join it. And so we just need to wait for uh, that to happen. Yeah, we see out here that Crazy House tournaments are no longer being scheduled, at least not hourly. Um, and that anti-chess tournaments will be taking their place. Um, so you guys probably don't want to stick around for another 40-some minutes to see whether or not this actually does have a player join it. Um, if you did, you'd be more than welcome to do so, but... I'm probably going to have to cut the stream before then, because who wants to watch that? Um, if I feel like super confident that I got it right, and sure, why don't I? Um, actually, wait, before I get too many tournaments out here at once, yeah, let me kill off these Super Blitz events. They're just a distraction to have the engine playing Bullet, Super Blitz, Blitz, and Classical. Um, it's consuming more uh, computation power than it needs to. Um, so let's unschedule those. Uh, uh, Monthly tournaments, weekly tournaments, daily tournaments. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to swap in another classical for this. Uh, oh, hang on, though. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Oh, I see. 
there's a anti-chess blitz. That's the difference. Is that that's not a standard time control. Um, so yeah, what do I want to put in this place? Um, yeah, let's add blitz. Add, yeah, change this to blitz. Standard. Change this to classical. Standard. Change. Well, let's not change too many things. I just want to change some of these rows here. They don't have to be in any particular ordering. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do I want to swap in here? I'm not interested in having a classical anti-chess tournament. Um, I guess I'm going to add in a bullet anti-chess. There we go. Instead of a super blitz standard, we're going to add in another bullet anti chess. And instead of a daily, yeah, I don't. Not a huge believer in hyper bullet by the way. Um, but I guess it's okay if there's one of those a day. Um, All right, it's not going to save the file until I'm really seriously ready to commit it. Um, it makes sense that the Racing Kings is a Super Blitz. Uh, Western tournaments. Halloween, whatever. We'll leave that be. Hourly standard tournaments. Um, wait, where is the? Oh, I remember. Yeah, I'm not interested in adding a super blitz every hour. Hourly limited tournaments. Um, I really don't care at all about those. Hourly crazy house tournaments. That should be empty chess. Um, it's fine. As long as that's not detracting in any way. All right, hopefully I have not put too much anti-chess in the schedule. Um, Monthly bullet and blitz anti chess. Weekly bullet and blitz anti chess. Daily bullet anti chess. Dare I change this? I think I dare. Um, yeah, we're going to add a daily hyper bullet anti chess just for lulls. Um, Is there any other hyper bullet stuff? Hyper bullet daily. So there's 
Yeah. The daily hyperbolid anti chess. Um, um, uh, personally, I think that these hyperbolid events are pish posh, but people like them. That's probably okay. So there's a daily blitz anti chess. That's good. I think I've created a schedule that does not repeat itself too often. Um, this is one case where it actually does repeat itself and that I've got daily anti-chess. Oh, and then there's the eastern anti-chess. Right. Bullet standard, bullet anti-chess. Bullet standard, classical standard. Um... Hmm. Yeah, just for lulz, I'll add in a second hyperbullet anti chess thing each day. Not that the computers care, but this could be a fun schedule to run. Do I have anything daily at 8 a.m.? I don't. So this should be fine. Okay, that's our new schedule. Refresh. More checking it. Does this compile? So apparently it does compile. In which case, yeah, from now on, there should not be very much in the way of this. Uh, wait, well, my original goal was to get rid of um, the super blitz. And I've succeeded at that. Um, I might want to change. Yeah, I don't like 3 1 as a time control really don't like it. Um, oh, but I don't go here to change that. I change that in schedule that scale. Um, where instead of saying um, yeah, increment tournaments are now going to be 2 2 instead of 3 1. Uh, if we've got hourly tournaments. Four two is fine. Standard. Oh for okay. So I'm a bit confused about that. ZH Inc. Obviously is intended to handle Crazy House. Oh. Um. Let's see. Percent S. ZH Inc. There we go. Fine. Um, super Blitz hourly. What's a good time control for? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to think what would be a good time control for Hyperbullet anti chess? Because you saw I hit the Blitz. Um, four two is okay, but three two is better. 
Um, I don't think I scheduled any Super Blitz anti chess, but I could say Hyper Bullet uh, anti chess. It's going to be 0 2. Do I go there? I think I do go there. Or half minute in one second increment. That could be fun. Um, standard increment 3 2, that's fine. So 0 0.5 plus 1 or half plus 1 could be a fun time control. Um, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I did not make any super blitz anti chess events. There's our limited, there's hourly anti chess. Um, Super Blitz. Bullet, Hyper Bullet, and Blitz. So that's good. bullet hourly yeah because playing anti chess with zero increment is just not as much fun as playing it with a one second increment um, engines again don't care at all but I care um, So, let's see, does my stuff compile? I assume so. Yeah, this is successfully compiled and deployed and all that while I was thinking and bantering. Um, so yeah, we've only got a half hour to go until uh, the hourly anti-chess arena starts. Um, but yeah, I don't think you guys are going to stick around for all that. And unfortunately, I've run out of things to code at this point. Um, of all my Russian books, the defense contains and diffuses the greatest warmth, which may seem odd, which may seem odd seeing how supremely abstract chess is supposed to be. Um, but yeah, the defense here is supposed to be a title. Um... Yeah, it's a novel by Vladimir Nabokov. If I pronounced that right, and I probably haven't. So, anyhow, uh, for those who tuned in this bright and early morning, thanks for doing so. For those watching the video on demand, sorry this hasn't been more exciting. I've actually been just coding things today. Testing tends to be more involved uh, than coding. And usually during testing, you know what you're doing. During coding, you're both brainstorming um, and trying to implement the thing. Usually supposed to brainstorm everything up in advance and know all the requirements and know exactly what you're doing. But when you're doing more of a creative process, it's more like painting. You don't know all the requirements. You don't know what's there, what's not there. And you're learning a lot of things along the way. And maybe that could be appreciated but more likely than not it just sounds like me rambling so sorry about that um either way thanks for tuning in thanks for stopping by